Hello everyone. Um, well, I just thought I'd make a video because it's not. It's been a while since I've made one, and uh, yeah, I just want to let you all know that I am still here. I'm not dead. Um, <laughs> uh, I just haven't um, made any videos recently. I haven't really got any new phones, or most of the ones that I've shown on my channel are the ones I've I've already um, I've still got. I haven't got any new ones. But uh, recently, I've for such a, probably about two years, I'd say, I've had my GPO Mickey Mouse phone set up on this um, cabinet here in the entrance to my bedroom, and I had it connected down here, and um, I just felt like a change because it had been there for a while, and I thought, oh, I'll just uh, give it a clean, and that's so I took it off and cleaned it. Um, you know, it was full of dust, so I just took it off the table and um, unplugged it and gave it a dusting off. And I thought, oh, I'll just have a bit of a change. So I was going through the various phones in my drawers. And uh, this was the one that I decided I'd uh, put into service, if you like, for a while. It is a 1965 GPO 706. Um, it's all original. It's got the original receiver. Dated 65, and of course, it has the original transmitter as well. Hard to do with one hand. I normally have a tripod, but I just haven't got it the room really in this entrance doorway to set a tripod up. But yeah, it's still got the original carbon transmitter. I might upgrade it actually to a electronic one because I do have some. Got a right a funny smell to it. This phone, it's hard to describe. It's sort of an maybe an acrid -y sort of chemically smell. I'm not sure if something's um, breaking down. I'm not sure if it's these cables or the restraints. Typically, the restraints, especially on these red ones, always leach out. The cords tend to um, stiffen up, but this one's in good condition. It's not um, damaged or um, knotted or anything, or overstretched. It's, it's nice and stretchy, so I know that this phone hasn't been exposed to an awful lot of sunlight. Um, because those cards are in good condition. And of course the line card is tucked behind the back here. Of course, can you tell that I like Mickey Mouse? <laughs> my lovely picture that my sister got me. And, uh, that was my original Mickey Mouse from when I was a kid. And uh, my ex got me this one. Anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, so apart from the Mickey Mouse obsession, let's carry on with the guided tour of the telephone. So if I can get this cord from behind here, I'm gonna have to pick the phone up so I cannot pull it from behind. There we go. Um, it's got the original line cord and I've connected it. Hopefully you can see, it's a bit dim. So I'm recording in the evening um, it's got the original block terminal and I fixed it to the wall of course it's got a BT plug connected through the other end it just makes it look a bit authentic um, originally these block terminals would have been mounted horizontally not vertically but I thought mounting it vertically would give a little bit more length to the line cord um, and also because the Mickey Mouse phone that had the 96A jack for the 505 plug that it has, because it was um, a plugged phone, not the BT plug, the 70s type. And uh, that jack was authentically mounted vertically. So since the screw holes were already there, I didn't want to make more. So uh, I fixed it vertically. So anyway. The line cords on these 706s, certainly the early ones, were pretty short and they also didn't have um, a carrying handle, as you can see. Later ones, they started adding a plastic handle. They took these metal chrome um, inserts. They have a specific name, but I can't think of it at the moment. It escapes me. And they started adding a plastic handle and then um, they just snapped. Um, there were metal ones available. I'm not sure if those were official through the GPO or not. 
but uh, the 746 that came after this had a built-in handle but I believe the GPO didn't want you to pick up the phone and carry it around. Um, I'm not sure if that was a law or if that was just a, a preference that they didn't want. Because of course they owned the telephone and the lines and everything back then so yeah anyway this phone's in pretty good condition. I've got my own number card in there. I've covered it up because obviously that's my phone number. Um, it's not quite period correct, I don't think. This is a 70s style number card. Um, I think in this era, it had been the 300 type, which had the red lettering. But anyway, it is an alphanumeric bezel because this is um, pre-1970, so we still had letters in numbers at this stage. Dial's got a nice smooth sound to it, as 706 is tended to. As you can hear. Um, metal finger stop, plastic, coloured finger wheel. Um, and everything is original, these aren't reproduction parts. There's some slight damages to the phone, there's a bit of a scratch on it there. It's a bit of scratching on the side, if you can see it just there around there but overall for its age it's in pretty good condition I'll show you the bottom of it so you can see there general post office or gpo batch sampled 7953 so that's with the stamp that would have been put on it when this phone was um dispatched ready for installation so it's model 706 l l for lettered ser is the manufacturer i believe this was made by a company in, um, I think it was Durham. I looked it up the other night and I, I can't remember. I should have uh, refreshed my research for this video. But anyway, you can put in GPO um, manufacturer codes online. It'll give you a full list. But I think it's, um, I think it's a, um, what do they, where's it called now? Where's Durham? Come on, Alex. Geography escapes me as well, it seems. Newcastle. I think it's a Newcastle manufacturer that. 65 is the year that, that it was uh, manufactured and 2A, um, I believe, is the wiring plan for this phone. Either that or it means it's a Mark 2A. I'm not quite certain on that. If somebody knows, they could probably comment and let me know. Uh, it's got the newer type feet, which has the concaved um, sections in it. The earlier 706s had just like domed feet and apparently they changed them to this type um, because they used to slide around apparently. So that's why they modified that. Here's the back of the phone. Um, the restraints are in really good shape. Um, just generally in good condition. Uh, I'll take the cover off and uh, show the inside. So just thought I'd mention to remove the case on a 706, you just loosen these two flathead screws on the um, hook switch assembly. And then you just lift up the case. And oftentimes it doesn't want to come off first time because you haven't quite loosened them enough. Always happens to me. And you just pull it forward like that. And that is the inside of the phone. Typically with 706s, you got a little wiring diagram. And there's the inside. There's a little metal um, holder, I suppose you could call it, or clip, to hold the, in this case, the dummy switch in place. This would have been a, this is just a blanking piece. Some of the models had a switch here, for example, for a, a call exchange button, if you're on a party line or shared service. It's got the metal ring because of course it's got the original alphanumeric bezel if it was a reproduction one it would have just been a push and twist bezel a bit like a 746 had but yeah there's the inside of the phone anyway so we've got the two gongs here we've got a nice sound to them they marry well together such a classic sound you can see the clapper there um so your bells are 24A, which is the higher pitch one, and the 24B, which is the lower pitch. Um, you can see the coils just there for the ringer. And I can uh, get my 
hand in there. There you go. So yeah, uh, you got a capacitor thing here. Um, it has the old style of um, hook switch, which isn't a micro switch, it's actual metal contacts. Let's see if I can show you here without knocking that snow globe over. You can see there, you've got proper contacts. And uh, the back of the phone here, this was something different with the 706 that was done away with, I believe, in the 746, which is this card here. Well, it's more of a circuit board. But this was a regulator card, and I believe that if you were too close to the exchange, um, this was to regulate the, the current, I suppose, of the transmission. And if you turned it that way, you could uh, disengage it. And... Uh, yeah, that's what that was for. And they painted the thing black here, this little bulb, because apparently uh, customers were complaining that you could see the phone lighting up in the dark, uh, especially on red models like this. But anyway, let's just hold this hook switch down so it doesn't tinkle the bell while I try and put this back. So that just slots in there at the back here. And uh, as you can see, it's got the rectifier 205 there to uh, prevent you know, extra current on the receive, especially when you're fiddling about with the hook switch. Um, it just helps with any interference. Uh, I've converted this to BT, um, so I've just changed the straps around, basically. Um, normally, on terminals four and five here, you'd put a 3.3 .3 kilo ohm resistor, but I never put them in because I really feel it kills the powerfulness of the ring, so. I never bother with that. But anyway, yeah, that's the inside of the phone. You've got your dial. Earlier versions didn't have this dust cover, earlier 706s, and certainly the Bakelite 300 series. But yeah, there we go. That's the inside of the phone. So, of course, putting the case back on, it just hooks under these two pips at the front of the metal casing. And uh, you just do up those two screws. So I think that's all there is to say on this phone, so uh, let's do dial out and ring back. Hopefully you can hear the dial tone there. There we go. Has such a lovely ring, the 700 series. Um, the sound of that uh, phone pretty much continued on from the 300 series all the way until the late 70s. And then obviously through the 80s, phones really started to change, not just in sound. So anyway, there we have it. There's a lovely 1965 GPO 706 in lovely condition. So, sorry about my uh, absence, and I uh, hope you're all doing well anyway. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you'll see me again soon. But uh, for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.